really you want to cultivate for yourself an idea of kind of form sense where you understand very well what a finished version of your drawing actually looks like. Take for instance a drawing by John Singer Sargent. His finished drawing is not necessarily going to look like my finished drawing. His finished drawing is going to have a strong sense of the hand of the artist. There are going to be slashy passages of charcoal defining broad areas that are somewhat unimportant to the purpose of the focal features of the drawing. He's sometimes going to have a dark background, but the evenness of that dark background is not going to take the highest priority for him. I think a lot of times you're just going to see parts of the drawing that in a way look very unrefined and those are going to kind of cast into contrast the more refined aspects of his drawing and really assist through that observation of those two kind of polar opposites a feeling of kind of completeness in the focal area. You can look at a drawing by an artist like Michelangelo. Similarly, his form sense really kind of comes out of a place of utility with the idea that so many of his drawings are a way for him to think about or consider different compositional ideas, different structural kind of researches. So a Michelangelo drawing which is finished is going to have a completely different form sense from the kind of finished version of a drawing that I would make. Some of the really key elements to the stage where we consider finishing a drawing are going to be things like modeling form, which is to say ensuring that the gradation from the highest key lights into the shadows have a certain degree of uniformity and a sense of refinement. There aren't going to be a lot of broken edges in the most kind of focal areas of the drawing. Those are going to be reserved more for the sort of edges of the composition. I'm also really going to work on refining shapes. So the final definition of those shadow edges, the darkest manifestation of the shadow taking place along that core shadow edge, those are going to be things that I really reserve for the final stages of the drawing. Looking back and forth between my drawing and my source image, I'm searching for a certain balance of values that seems to make sense between the two of them. I'm looking at the darkest darks and asking myself whether the relationship of those darkest darks to the overall value of the shadow, do those two meet up and make sense in a way that I want? Do those two values together seem to push the light shape upward and forward into our attention in a way that it does in my source image? In order to judge these value relationships, one of the techniques that I use is actually a really, really simple one. I stand back from the drawing a few paces, I squint down my eyes until I'm almost looking through my eyelashes, and I start to observe value differences. With my eyes wide open, looking at the drawing, I might find that there are two values within the shadow that stand out from each other. When I squint down, usually what I'm looking for is for those two values to bond together. Anywhere in the portrait that is really hidden from the light, I tend to pump up or accentuate the value of that edge in order to further describe the separation between light and shadow. I do find among the students that I work with that this is a place where they can create a little bit too much emphasis sometimes. So while I am expressing this as a really important and useful tool in the description of shadow and light, I'm also going to offer a little bit of caution and say your over attention to that edge can cause it to get too sharp, too dense, and it can draw too much attention. In this way, we create these kind of focal edges in a place that really they don't belong. Something that is a temptation, I think, in the last moments of a drawing is that sometimes we try to grab a hold of something too tightly. Usually, this is the death knell for a very vital property in a drawing. When I think of keeping a drawing alive and keeping it fresh, I think of the quality of breadth, which is to say, an ability to consider the drawing and the picture as a whole, as an entirety, as a single unit, and that every part of that drawing is all pulling together to work towards that singular goal. If I tend to become too obsessed with one small shape in the hair, I'm going to tighten up my edges around that shape, I'm going to over-render, and eventually I'm going to compromise the balance that maintains in my drawing that sense of breadth. I would encourage you to think about breadth not so much as a certainty or a definitive property, but more as a kind of target, a target that we aim for endlessly, though not something that can be pointed to with certainty. It has a slightly nebulous sense about it, much like harmony, for instance. When we think about having harmony in a drawing, I feel like we know what we're talking about, but at the same time, you can't point to the harmony and say, there it is. So with concepts, big philosophical ideas like breadth and like harmony, we are simply meant to meditate on them, to focus on that idea 
interpret it for ourselves and manifest those qualities in a situation like a portrait drawing.